Hi guys, this is me, Luke, back to give you another run through of a SimSig simulation. And this one is Exeter. Now Exeter is effectively, or probably 80% of this simulation is the main line, which starts at Bridgewater Station on the Bristol to Exeter line and uh, Coglow Junction on the line to Castle Carey. So that's at the kind of northeast of the simulation and then down at the other end kind of goes all the way through to here down to a across and ivy bridge which is just before plymouth on the great western main line there's also the small branch to Paynton, which comes which branches off at newton abbott then you have the exmouth branch which comes away from exeter central and has some one train working there and then you have the, the Waterloo line, what would have been the London South Western Railway going via Honiton towards kind of Salisbury and up to London in that way. A bit further on, we have the branch to Barnstaple. Again, a lot of this is now one train working, whereas before that was quite a, a main line and used to have services to Ilfracombe beyond Barnstaple. But now all of that's closed and we basically have a, a, a kind of skeleton service that runs backwards and forwards up there and then the main line comes up again back to Taunton and then up to the junction here at Cogload. So let's work our way through this. We have in in the case of Exeter the default timetable is 2006 so this is the era of kind of cross-country voyages of high-speed trains of kind of sprinters and, and stuff like that. So we tend to have cross-country services coming in, or all of them pretty much will come in on the Bristol line. We'll have some some of the HSTs that might be kind of London, Bristol, Western Supermare, Taunton, Exeter. And you get some of the you know unusual trains, which are London to Penzance, but they might go via Bristol as well. So probably two thirds, maybe three quarters of the traffic uh, at the north comes in and goes out here at Bridgewater and uh, the remainder comes from Castle Carey now this is generally freight trains because you've got all the quarries up towards Westbury up on this line here and then you have the the fastest trains from London to Penzance come via Newbury Westbury Castle Carey direction and they will come here onto Cogload and some of those trains might be first stop Exeter or first stop Taunton so that's that's where those come in there. This is a flying junction, which is very helpful because it means you can tend to set quite long routes through here without interfering. You can see there are no sidings or anything here. So if you know the next service here, like 1B16, is going to Bridgewater, then you can set that route all the way through and you're not going to conflict with anything else. Uh, just something to bear in mind that the, the approach indicator here comes up quite early for slower moving trains so just be wary of setting the route into Taunton too quickly especially if it's a freight train because it's possible although I haven't seen it yet that a class one train will come in from Bristol before the goods train is actually reached here so don't be too keen you do get quite a lot of warning the other thing is, for some reason, I'm not sure, these two signals here are not autoed when you first turn the simulation on. So uh, be aware of that, because otherwise you'll get trains stopped at red lights. Other than that, we come into Taunton. The Taunton's a kind of an un unusual station. It used to be much, much bigger than this. And it used to have a massive uh, kind of good shed and loco depot and all, all kinds of things. But even though it's been rationalised down, you effectively have the main lines, which is straight through in the middle and then you have the <clears throat> the relief lines are a bit like a loop that come off the side but that said most of the train stopping at Taunton will stop on the side platforms and not on the island platform this is obviously an exception so there's nothing particularly tricky here one thing to bear in mind is that some of the trains in the day will arrive early and we'll stop usually in platform four and then might wait for 10 or 15 minutes for another service to pass. So be a bit careful. Check how long the train's going to be in Taunton before you set the route straight through. Otherwise, these are three minutes of approach locking these signals because they're on the fast line. So <clears throat> just make sure you don't get caught out by that. 
there isn't much here in terms of fair water yard there are a couple of freight trains a day going into and out of here but um sorry <clears throat> for the most part you'll come straight out of platform two onto the main line and not really use the relief line here very much if you're using the pre-2006 era, there's a level crossing here at Silk Mill. Uh, pain in the neck. I hate crossings anyway, manually operated ones. So this is the modern era where that, that crossing's been removed and replaced, um, I think, with a bridge. So that's pretty cool. It's just something less to worry about. And then when we go all the way through here towards Tiverton, in different eras, Tiverton moved. So Tiverton Junction is where the original station was. Back in the day, there used to be a line went off at Tiverton and went up towards eventually a part, uh, another station in Barnstable, the Great Western Station. That's obviously gone now. And then they ended up putting the station here, at Tiverton Parkway, so they could put a big car park and stuff. So depending on the era, the station will either be here or it will be here, but it doesn't really make much difference. Uh, the um, the amount of traffic you won't often use the passing loops they're there if you need them but generally you need to just set the main line however notice that these signals are not automatic and they have no auto buttons so you spend quite a lot of time resetting that route like after that train's gone through you have to reset it for this train but such is life uh, then when when you get to Stoke Cannon, this is the first uh, slight annoyance is you have a manually operated level crossing. Now, these uh, these trains like the 2C is probably a 75 mile an hour DMU, which it is. So what I tend to do is wait for that train to hit the, the block just before the yellow signal here. So once that train's well and truly past this and into here, that's usually when I lower it ready to clear uh, to clear the, the level crossing. You can set the route across it before you lower the level crossing, but obviously it won't clear until you clear it. The reason why you can kind of leave that one quite late is the trains are starting to slow down on their approach to Exeter anyway. There, I'm not sure if there are any, but if there are, there are, there are very few non-stop services here. And I think Exeter's a 30 mile an hour through line anyway. So uh, not really a problem there. And again, trains leave in Exeter. They tend to be pulling away, obviously, quite slowly. They're building up speed. So again, I tend to wait for them to hit that yellow signal before lowering the crossing. I don't know if it's peculiar to Exeter, but I've noticed that it seems to be quite common on this simulation that you try and clear it. And it says there's a road vehicle blocking the crossing, which is incredibly annoying when it happens. You probably know you have to cancel the route first, then you can raise the crossing and then obviously you'll have to wait and lower it again set the route again and all the rest of it then we get to Cowley Bridge Junction this whole kind of area is relatively slow moving like I say most trains stop at Exeter and even if they don't they've got to go quite slowly anyway through here we have Riverside Yard which has a some empty coaching stop for passengers but it's basically a goods yard so some services will stop in here temporarily and then come out the north end to carry on their journey others depart and uh, and terminate at the yard you need this is one of the few places on the simulation that you need to call into if you need to send a train into here normal kind of stuff you just you know hit, hit the telephone button place call um i'm paused so i can't do it choose choose riverside and then and then we're all good so that's fine and then underneath here we have exeter new yard which is generally used just for stabling trains in the morning it's not used a lot during the day but after the morning rush hour i think one service parks up in here for a couple of hours there's nothing particularly special about it but really the main kind of sticking point here is this big level crossing that runs across the entire throat of Exeter St. David's. I don't know what crazy person decided that was a good idea. Uh, the main thing is because most services stop here and most of the platforms, but not platform two, have train ready to start signals. They will tend to give you that a minute before they depart, which is long enough to set a route, lower the level crossing, clear it and then the train's ready to leave. So it's not normally a problem compared to some of the other level crossings. It's 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 easier to operate, but it's kind of annoying anyway. If we pop back here to the Barnstable branch, it's kind of quite long winded in, in terms of number of stations, but its operation is relatively straightforward. So in this case, this service is running into Barnstable uh, and this train that's already there is coming back again. It will either pass at Crediton 
or it will pass at Exford. You can obviously can work it out by looking here at what time. Well, that's at Exford at 9.26 and that's at Exford at 9.25, 9.26. So, you know, it's going to pass here. So this button here is invaluable. Leave it on auto and it will just manage all of these signals through here. But this part you'll need to manage yourself. So we have a level crossing at Crediton, which doesn't have an auto button. So you need to remember to raise that after the, the train's left. Uh, usually what I do is the trains tend to stop at Crediton. So I'll look at this and say, right, it's, it's going to leave at 9.04. It will tend to arrive relatively early. So don't be too keen to lower the level crossing. Lower it about a minute before the train's due to leave. Once it's lowered and cleared, then you'll be allowed to set the routes from signal CN4 up to 349. You can't set that route until that crossing is lowered and cleared. So just, just so you know that. Once you've set that in to there, you can forget about it because it will get to here. That part will work automatically. And likewise, then the service coming back will obviously get as far as here before it hits the, the signal protecting the crossing. So as it pokes its head out, you can just lower that, uh, clear it, set the route across here. And sometimes the trains cross here, sometimes they cross here, but there's not, not a great deal of traffic. Other than that, that's relatively straightforward. This is a slightly older simulation. It doesn't have automatic code insertion. So when the services arrive at places like Barnstaple, at Exmouth and at Paynton, you will need to interpose the departing code on top of the train that's arrived. Or what I usually do is once that serve once that code of the arriving train has appeared at Barnstaple, which occurs as soon as it enters the one track section here. I immediately overwrite it with the departing train because I kind of don't really care too much about the arriving train code as soon as it's, you know, away from my control. So that's fairly straightforward. I think there's one train a day to Meldon Quarry. Again, that works in exactly the same way is you would just get here, lower the crossing, set the route to that exit, the triangle there. And then the train will just kind of do its stuff because it's one train working that will go red and you won't be able to send another train until that comes back out again. Other than that, not much. I don't think anything goes into credit in here. So that's the, the kind of the whole north of Exeter. Then on the at Exeter station itself, we have the West Yard. So most of the passenger trains are stabled here at night. So in the morning, lots of ECS movements. When they come out of here, they tend to go towards the limit of shunt signal there, number 35, and then come back from that signal. And then when they come from St. David's back into here, they tend to go towards signal 62 and then reverse back from 679 via 677 into one of these. Notice it doesn't matter which one you send it to, but strictly speaking, if it says it's aiming for the fuel point, then you should obviously set it into road one to six, which as it says here is where the fuel point is. That's just to be correct. And then if we look at the loop towards exit to central, an important thing to note is that you can use the reverse line to get into exit to central from St. David's. So obviously, generally, you would go from platform one to platform three here and then carry on to Honiton or to Exmouth. But note that if you go the reverse line, so from platform three, you can't get onto this line anyway. So you'd have to use the reverse line. But when you do that, you end up on platform two at Exeter Central. There's no crossover here. And then you have to cross over afterwards. Notice that there is one service in the morning where an empty coaching stock move basically jams up the whole junction. You end up with a service in platform three towards Exmouth. The empty coaching stock here trying to reverse back. But this train wants to leave before this train wants to reverse back. Then this one gets stuck at the limit of shunt so that, uh, because it's gone too far because that signal is beyond the limit of shunt. So then you have to authorise it to pass signal at danger, come back to platform two. But then there's a service in platform three that needs to come to platform two. It all ends up a bit nasty. So what you can do is uh, you've got a couple of choices. I'd send the, the service, the, uh, the 5E service into the head shunt here to get it out of the way let these two services run and then bring it back. So you have to fiddle around with the timetable. It's a bit annoying, but 
you don't really have a lot of choice. The other thing is you can let the 1L train in Platform 3 leave about five minutes late, and I think it makes up two of those minutes by the time it gets to, to Autonaton. So it's not terrible, but it's a bit messy. When we then get to the line to Honiton and to Salisbury and to Waterloo, we have a level crossing at Pinho. If the train's due to stop at Pinho, don't lower the level crossing until you've worked out what time it's going to leave Pinho. It can arrive here five minutes early, so you don't want to lower it uh, prematurely. However, some, some of the services don't stop at Pinho, in which case, kind of as soon as they're really at St. James's Park, you can lower this so it can come straight through. But in order to set this route from signal EJ2 to signal HN2, what you need to do is you need to offer the train with a left click on the offer button. Generally, immediately, you'll see that the little dial on the block instrument will go to accept. And once that's happened, you can set the signal straight through and then the rest of it will just happen normally. Obviously, you'll need to then lower and clear this before that will actually go green. But you can set the route before that once that's accepted. And then trains coming the other way, you'll see a, a service will appear here on this bottom line to show that it's coming towards Exeter. You get a notification. And then once that's happened, what you have to do is you have to left click this. So this should be showing what it's showing now. Left click the middle and that goes from normal to accept. So that tells Honiton that you accept the train. Once that happens, you'll see the route will automatically be set from Honiton back to signal EJ1. And then you you leave that. That will go to train online, uh, the little T in the middle, as soon as that um, comes onto the single track here. And then once you the train kind of pokes its head out the end of the block circuit here, lower the level crossing, clear it, set the route into Pinho. Once you see the train leave the one track and that, um, and that signal is cleared, then you will need to left click. Uh, sorry, is that right? Yeah, left click this to take it back to normal. And then after that, you'll be able to left click um, arrive. Sorry, I think right click that I should have said right click that to make it go back to normal and then left click the arrive button to tell Honiton the trains arrived and then the block instrument will reset. It's normal. That's normally what a block instrument does. But if you don't know, so sending it, we offer the train. That's all we have to do. Then once Honiton accepts it by that going to green, we can set the route. And then when trains come the other way, we'll be we'll be told of the offer from Honiton. We uh, right click that to accept it. Uh, that that will go to train online. Once the train arrives, we have to right click that to reset it back to normal. And then once the train's poked out, press arrive. If you press arrive and nothing happens and this doesn't reset, then either the train hasn't quite come far enough or you've forgotten to put that back to normal, in which case the button will flash, but it won't do anything. So that's fa fairly straightforward. Be a little bit careful about regulation around Exmouth Junction because you have trains to Exmouth and back and the trains coming in from Honiton. It's worth checking. Sometimes the Honiton train comes through first. Sometimes both of these trains, the train going into Exmouth and the one coming out, will go through first. Sometimes one of maybe the train to Exmouth will go, then the Honiton, then the train coming back. So there's no real rule about that. There's no regularity. So just do whatever you need to do there to click on the trains work out what time and then when you come down here unfortunately we've got a bit of kind of lazy signaling here we have this really long block which basically covers um, Polslow Bridge, Digbin Southton and all the way to the, the Topsham level crossing so you can't really see what's going on even when that train is right on top of the crossing it basically looks the same so you can't really tell the only way I work out when to put the crossing down is I find out when it's due to leave Digby and Soton, and then I usually leave it about a minute after it's left there, and then I lower the level crossing. And then it depends on if you've got a train that's there's no train in Exmouth at the moment, then you can signal that all the way through in one go right down to Exmouth. So the last section is EJ27 down to the exit signal. Uh, and you can do that in one go. However, if you've got a train like here that is in section that needs to come out to Topsham and they're actually crossing here, then you need to signal that one only to the call on arrow, not to um, not to that signal 
Otherwise, you'll get an overlap and this train won't be able to get in. Likewise, you'll have to signal that to the triangle and not to the signal when they're crossing over. And then usually uh, this will arrive just when the other one's about to leave. But again, you need to check that because sometimes the train coming out is a little bit early and you might prefer to raise the crossing for two minutes before lowering it again. So you just need to keep an eye on that. But this is one of those kind of slightly annoying level crossings. There's quite a lot of traffic crossing here. So you've got to kind of pay attention to that so you avoid your, your phone calls so that's that that's that we don't really use platform one very much i think there might be one service a day that goes into there but most of the sidings around here are not really used there are some services that terminate at exit to central so again just keep an eye on those the codes generally are f towards exmouth um, b towards barnstable but also b towards bridgewater so be careful with that and then the the c services tend to be to, towards Paynton. The, in terms of the locals and then obviously all the class one trains pretty much at this level are going up towards Taunton and all the class one trains pretty much are going that way other than the class one train that goes from Honiton into St David's and back. Now as we go south of here most of this twin track as far as Newton Abbott is pretty straightforward most of it I leave autoed obviously if you're going to use a scenario where the line here is closed because of the sea wall and all of the waves coming over then you end up having to regulate everything across the up line here but obviously when you're first learning it you don't need to do that Dawlish Warren is a bit annoying most trains do not stop there and should be signaled through some of the local services do stop at Dawlish Warren. Fortunately, you can generally check really early, so you can check that train and say, right, it's not going to Dawlish Warren, so there's nothing else is going to come in between that service and arriving here, so we can set that route straight through now in anticipation. Uh, also, be careful because some of the Class 2 trains will stop in Dawlish Warren to allow a fast service to pass so just be a little careful of that when once you notice that something is stopping a Dawlish Warren, just check its arrival and departure times to see whether they're longer than two minutes apart. So generally, most of the trains go straight across here. Then we get to Newton Abbott. There is some freight action into and out of Hackney Yard. Not very much, not enough to worry about, but just be aware of that. There is a service in the morning that also comes out from Heathfield. It might be um, a seeding train. I can't remember. But really at Newton Abbott, you kind of can do pretty much anything. So coming down, you can get onto any of the three platforms. Coming up, you can get onto any of the three platforms. And also platform two and one have a shunt arrows for bringing trains in. So that allows them to, in this case, I've not used the arrow. And so by using this, I get an overlap onto the main line. So if I had a service coming to platform two, I would be blocking that while that train's coming in. So if I do have a service coming into platform two, I can use a little arrow and then that signal will clear on approach rather than like it is now. Be a bit careful here. This is where a lot of confusion happens. Some trains coming down stop at platform three and go onto Ivy Bridge. Some most stop at platform two, Ivy Bridge, platform two, Paynton, platform one, Paynton. And then likewise, trains coming up usually come out via platform one, but that's not a given as well so you need lots of checking platforms for newton abbott also be careful sometimes the train leaving Paynton arrives before the train coming the other way and vice versa and this section here that 2co2 in is a very long block takes about about eight minutes or something to get from torre all the way up to newton abbott so don't assume just because the train's here that it's imminently coming into Newton Abbott. It takes a long time to get there. So double check the times before you send anything out. Otherwise, you're going to cause a traffic jam. And the other thing to note is that there are a couple of Class 1 trains that come from here that actually reverse at Newton Abbott and go to Paynton. This is one of them. So it's actually come from Penzance. It came up to Newton Abbott. Uh, I think I put it into the wrong platform, but that's my mistake. And then it comes back here into Paynton. And then likewise, that in this case, that's going to become 2F. So that means it's going to go to Exeter. But there is another service that comes out of here, stops at Newton Abbott and goes back to Ivy Bridge. So just keep an eye on that. Um, that'd be just because there's so many variations at Newton Abbott. Nothing much about the branch here, except there's a level crossing before Paynton. 
you can that this blocks here are relatively short so as soon as you see the train kind of coming down from Torquay you can pretty much lower the crossing the trains will generally go into platform two and that's because there's no direct route out of platform one back onto the upline for some reason I, I'm not sure on this timetable if there are any but there are a couple I think of charter trains which go into the carriage sidings off the back of platform one but most of the time these are straight into platform two lower the crossing Paynton also has a train ready to start signal and that will go a minute before the train's ready to leave so you don't have to panic about getting the crossing down in time you'll get the signal you can set that lower it clear it and it's automatic so that's not too much of a headache and then that brings us down to Totnes. So when the train uh, gives comes to the approach, you get a few minutes warning. It's not a it's not a massive long time, but when a train approaches, you need to click on it and find out whether it's due to stop at Totnes or not. Most of the services do, but some of them don't. So you don't want to put it onto the up passing line through Totnes platform if it's not stopping there. So just check that as soon as it arrives. Sometimes you'll have a train here and another one will arrive kind of on its tail. So just be mindful of that. But generally it's not too hard to regulate. And the same obviously goes for trains going down. Check whether it's due to call in at Totnes or not and then set these. With most of the loops with Dawlish, with Totnes, you tend to get quite a lot of notice. You get to set this quite early and then not worry too much about it. So that's pretty much Exeter St. David's. It's definitely doable with one person. The only thing to note is that it's a very, very slow start. If you start this at midnight, then nothing much happens until getting towards five o'clock. So highly recommend speeding up the time and, you know, kind of whizzing through that first bit because there's very, very little happens like I say, until about five o'clock. Once that happens, there's quite a lot happening. So there's plenty to keep you busy, even running at kind of normal speed or a bit faster. So, you know, have fun with it. It's a slightly older simulation, so it doesn't have quite all the bells and whistles. And theoretically, it can chain to, I think, uh, Plymouth, Bristol and Westbury, I believe. But I'm not sure of the current status of this. So, so some of them will need upgrading before you can chain it and i'm not sure whether this needs upgrading to chain to those but otherwise be yeah, a pretty decent pretty fun a couple of different eras to play around with a couple of different different difficulty levels so see what you think have a play any comments or questions please just chuck them below and don't forget to like the video if you like the video thank you very much